Blessings to you all. It's good to be back with you again to bring you another discipleship empowerment tip. And I pray that as we look at this word, it may bring us a nugget of understanding and some encouragement that as we get into God's word, it may strengthen us and cause us to grow a little bit deeper in him. As you can see, our word tonight is obedience. It's a wonderful word, but it's a challenging word at the same time because obedience can be such a broad word. You know, I've titled this just almost along the verse where it says, Obedience is better than sacrifice. But I think after we finish reading the word tonight, I think we would rather say probably sacrifice is easier than obedience. Sometimes it's easier to give up something than it is to live an obedient life. And so when I looked at this word obedience today, I got thinking, man, this is going to be a challenge because God wants us to walk in obedience. And so often we think that obedience, well, you know, maybe we can find a middle of the road. But unfortunately, sometimes when it comes to scriptures, some things don't have a middle of the road. They're either black or they're white. But there's very few things that go right down the middle. And this is one of those words. As you look at the idea of obedience, when it comes to being a noun, it means to follow orders. Conformity, respect, compliance, command, or instruction. Submission. Those are very powerful words, and they're, I don't know, sometimes they're hard to do and even to keep with each other, even as couples, as husbands and, and wife, to keep it, that with each other, to be obedient and submissive and in conformity with each other, but then to move it into that higher range where we are now doing that before our Lord and our God makes it a lot more challenging. We don't usually use the word obedience too much, but we use the word obey a lot more. Obedience is the noun and obey is the uh, verb and obedient is the adjective and each one of them have they're almost interchangeable, again, depending on how they're set up in the, in the sentence. But in the Old Testament, the word to obey or obedience was often used in conjunction with the Word of God and the voice of God. In the New Testament, we have it now, obedience is more to Christ Jesus and what He's done for us and through the leading and teaching of the Holy Spirit. So there's a little bit of a transition that comes between that of the Old Covenant and that of the New Covenant, and we're going to see that. But the challenge is that's going to be really tonight is to ask ourselves, are we obedient to the Lord in all areas? And you may not want to listen to this message because, as I said, it's just such a challenge because it's we want we want to find the the in between road between the one side and the other side, and where in scriptures it it is quite clear that God wants us to take a stand for Him, for His word, and that we obey His voice. Exodus twenty four verse seven says, and then He took the book of the covenant, and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said. All that the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. Now, right at the very beginning, as Moses was beginning them to get them ready through the scripture and the tabernacle and introducing the laws and everything, he gets up and he reads them the book. It's like me getting up in the church service this morning and reading a chapter of scripture and everybody's standing there and I wait for them to respond and they will say, Yes, Pastor, we will do all that the Lord has said, and we will do and be obedient. Wow, that would be an amazing thought there, wouldn't it? That we would get each one of us, that we would confess out loud before our leadership that we will not only do what the Word says, but will be obedient to the Word. Again, over in Deuteronomy, and you could say that Deuteronomy is basically the book on obedience and how to obey and what we should do and not do. The word obey and obedience is used a lot in the book of Deuteronomy, and we're just going to highlight a few of them. But Deuteronomy 4 verse 30 
and 31 says as follows. He says, when you are in distress and all these things come upon you in the latter days, when you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice, for the Lord your God is a merciful God, he will not forsake you nor destroy you nor forget the covenant of your father which he swore to them. Isn't it interesting that God tells the people, even in this early stage while they're wandering through the promised land, that I already know you're going to be disobedient. I already know you're going to turn your back on me and follow the gods of the other world. But I want to tell you that if you are at any time willing to turn back to me and be obedient to my word, I will show you mercy. That's the wonderful thing about God. God cannot handle disobedience, and there will be punishment for disobedience. But at any time, if we would turn to him and ask for forgiveness, he is a God of mercy. And we need to remember that because often I think we are more disobedient many times than we are obedient. I don't know about you. Maybe you are a little bit more perfect than I am. But I know there is all of us have weak areas. Then again, over in Deuteronomy chapter 11, uh, verses 26 to 28. Deuteronomy 11, it says, Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. I set them both before you, God says. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today. And the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the ways which I command you today to go after other gods, which you have not known. So he's saying today, you have a choice. Everyone has a choice, either obey or disobey. Serve the God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, or serve other gods. Now, a lot of times in North America, we don't have all, in a sense, other kinds of statues and monuments like they do over in the Asian countries, when you can go into certain places and they will have a thousand different deities and gods that they bow down and sacrifice and worship and all those kinds of things. We don't kind of understand that. But we do have other gods. Our materialism often has become a god for us. The things that we own, the things that we think we like or treasure, they become like other gods. And, and God here was warning that if you have a choice today, either choose to obey the commandments of the Lord God, or choose not to obey, but realize that there's results for either one of those decisions. And we will talk more about that as we move on into the New Testament. Again, in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 4, he says, You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him, and keep His commandments and obey His voice, and you shall serve him and hold fast to him. Wow, what a verse. If you don't have that one underlined, that's the one we need to underline, I think. You shall walk after the Lord. That's the key. If we're going to walk a life of obedience, it has to be after the Lord. When we're a disciple, it means to be a follower and a disciplined one under Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be a disciple, is a disciplined one and also a follower of him. So you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him. Fear him in holy reverence that there is going to be an accountability time for disobedience. So sometimes it's good to have a righteous fear, a holy fear before God, knowing that he does have to deal with those areas and people that have shown disobedience but that we need to keep his commandments and obey his voice. See, again, keep the law, but obey his voice. Both. There's a mixture of both. Sometimes we get a little bit out of balance by saying, well, I just listen to the Holy Spirit. I don't need anything from the Word. The Holy Spirit teaches me all that I need to know. Wrong. Okay? And then there's the other group that, well, I'm just a Bible thumper, and I believe in everything here, and I don't need any of the Holy Spirit. Wrong. If you listen to Jesus when he talked to the woman at the well, he said you need the spirit and truth. We need both of them because 
To be obedient to God, we need to be in balance, both to his word and to his spirit. And that's important. Would you agree with that? I have to always be asking God, I want to be in step to your will, O Lord, to hear what you have to say. So we obey his commandments, or another word for commandments, we obey his teachings, and we also obey his voice, both of them. The idea of and is a connecting word between those two. And then not only that, not only do we obey his teaching and his voice, but ye shall serve him, so we're serving him, and hold fast to him. What a wonderful, wonderful, encouraging verse that we should memorize and say, yes, that's what I want to walk in. That's how I want to be. I want to be a disciple who walks in the Lord, who fears the Lord, who holds on to the teachings of the word, who believes in the voice of God speaking from heaven, and that because of that, I have desire to serve him and to hold fast to him. Isn't that beautiful? And that's what our prayer should be. So then as we go over into Joshua, Joshua 24, or I should say Joshua 5, 6, it starts off, that this may be a sign among you and your children. Uh, I should go actually a little bit further over. 5, 6, sorry. That's another good verse there. Joshua 5, 6, and it says, For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness. <laughs> they walked 40 years in the wilderness. You wonder why? We'll soon find out. To all the people were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed. To all the people who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord, to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord had sworn to their fathers, that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. See, they missed out. Other than Joshua and Caleb, they missed out on God's blessing because they always continued to want to be disobedient. You know, and disobedience is a hard thing to overcome, but often we do it and we do it unconsciously sometimes, but we continue to do it. And Joshua warns the people. That's why they set up the memorial stone. And it goes on here and they do circumcision to, and again, to the, the statements that are being saying here, we're going to be obedient to your word, O oh God, and your word is also a covenant to us of what you have promised and what you said you will do. We know you will do it, both the good with the blessings and also the challenges of walking away from him and the punishment that comes along with that. In Joshua 24, 24 it says, And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. Here again, and that phrase, you know, that we will serve and his voice we will obey, goes on and on through a lot of places in the scriptures. And that's where we're heading today. We want to hear his word and say, not only that, Lord, but hear your voice and we will serve and obey. We're going to trust and obey for there's no other way. Right? There's no other way. And I know it sounds like a very strong teaching, but I couldn't find an in-between road when it comes to the word obedience. You're either in or you're out. You're either obeying or you're not obeying. There's no halfway in between. Then over in 1 Samuel, we got the issue of Samuel and Saul. Saul was told to do certain things and to do it a certain way. And Saul got impatient, and he decided to go his own way. See, sin is, is turning 180 degrees away from God and going your own way. So anytime that we are not obedient to God, we are sinning. We think sin is something that, oh, you're doing something very blaspheming and very terrible to somebody or kinds of... No, sin is simply when we turn away from the will of God for what he wants us to do, and we don't carry it out, we are sinning and have become disobedient. And that's what Saul had to learn. 
And Samuel says to him, Has the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than a fatted ram. See, Saul thought, well, I will just, I will keep some of this and I will give it to the Lord. But the Lord said, no, it's all mine. You can't keep some. You can't do this. You can't do that. This is what's going to happen. You're, I'm asking you, Saul, to do it this way because I want to see if you will be obedient as my servant and as my king. And he was not. And because of that, he lost his heritage of kingship and eventually, of course, he and his family lost everything because they weren't willing to obey. Then over in Jeremiah, Jeremiah again is a prophet that speaks so often about Israel and tells them and tries to remind them, tries to remind them, oh, I thought, you know, a lot of you that watch your parents, how many times you got to tell your kids to do something and they still don't do it? How many times do you tell them, I wish you would obey me. I wish you would do what I tell you. And they don't. I don't know if any of you have had kids like that. but And I won't say nothing because this is being recorded. But yeah, I think we've all been. But the thing is, we're also the same way. And in verse uh, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23, he gives a word about this. He says, but this, this is what I command them, saying... Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that you may dwell with you. Yet, yet, verse 24, they did not obey. Can you imagine that? God says, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to protect you, I'm going to give you increase, I'm going to multiply you like this, the stars of the heavens. Yet, they chose not to. It amazes me. It amazes me sometimes how often we can bring forth the good news of Jesus Christ and people choose not to obey. People choose to walk or they come in for a season and they come into the churches and they come in and they're participating and they're part of the things that we're doing and then they choose to do something else and, and walk away from the Lord. He says, yet they did, they did not obey or incline their ear, but followed the counsel and the dictates of their evil hearts and went backwards, not forward. This is an amazing little statement here that they started to follow after other counselors. They started to do what other people have said. You know, the Bible talks in the New Testament that, that in the last day there's going to be shepherds that are going to go out and people's ears are going to be wanted to be tickled in that, but they're not going to be following the word of God. And, and, and Jesus, or God says here, and when that ends up happening, because they become disobedient, they end up going backwards instead of forwards. Maybe that's where we get our idea of backsliding from. I don't know. But it's sad. It's sad that we go backwards instead of forwards with our God. Oh, what some powerful scriptures. Then we move over to the New Testament. And again, Paul is going to share a lot of things concerning the importance of obedience. Because why did Paul have to share so much? Because he dealt with churches all over the place. He established churches. He worked with churches. Many of them were Gentiles who came out of heathenism. They worshipped idols. And Paul had to keep hammering on them and teaching them, both the Gentiles and the Jews, it's more important to obey God than it is anything else. Anything else, it's more important. And so in Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 19, Paul says to the Roman church, For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners. He's talking about Adam here because of Adam and Eve were what? They disobeyed God. Can you imagine they had the entire garden all to themselves and God says, just one little thing. Can you just do this one little thing? Don't touch that tree and don't eat of that. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
And so what do they do? They go over and Satan comes along. There's that bad counseling. And Satan comes along and whispers into their ear. Next thing you know, they eat of the fruit, take it, eat it, and get disobedient. And that was the sin. It was the sin of disobedience. They, there's only two people on earth. There was nothing they could have done yet to physically be known as a sinner other than that one thing of disobedience. And so it says here, For as one man's disobedient, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. See, I believe that we can have more power of the Lord and more power and anointing of the Holy Spirit when we become obedient to Him and His voice and then He clothes us more with righteousness and the enemy cannot use guilt and condemnation to just try to destroy us. But because we're walking in the Lord, we know that we're a child of God and we know that we've been covered in His righteousness. Paul again on Romans chapter 6 verse 16 he says do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey you are that one's yourself slaves to you are that one slave whom your body whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness he's saying here if whatever you're obeying you are attached to it. And if it's a negative thing that you're obeying, you're a slave to it. Let me tell you again. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves who you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? See, disobedience, again, it's, we say it's such a narrow way there's got to be other ways. No, disobedience is rebellion, and rebellion is sinfulness, and it takes us out of fellowship and out of the presence of God. But if we obey, it brings us into His righteousness and into His fellowship and into His everlasting life. Oh, there is, yes, a choice. But to choose rightly, there's such a great blessing. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says here casting down arguments well let me go back up the four for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal so we're we're not in a physical fight here we're in a spiritual fight and the spiritual fight is not to be obedient to the things of this world so much but it's to be obedient to god and satan wants us not to be obedient to god so paul tells the corinthians church for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds that's what they're there for casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God anything that comes against the knowledge of God is not of God bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ see the biggest battlefield is our mind and we need to bring our mind into captivity to the what obedience to Christ that is the hardest thing. That's why we need to put on the helmet of salvation. Because our thought is the battleground. I don't know about you, but I've been around a long time now, and I know the biggest battleground is between here and here. My mind wants to say things, and that's where the enemy wants to speak into. He wants me to hear his voice in my heart, where the Holy Spirit is trying to speak into and trying to hear. And those two are at war. And Paul was saying, remember whom you serve. He is a mighty God who can pull down strongholds. If we just give ourselves over to Him and be obedient to His way, He will help us to overcome. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 says this, And being found in appearance as a man, He humbled Himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. See, Paul was trying to say to the Philippian church, Here, Christ, yeah, probably didn't want to go to the, Christ, or to the cross. In his own physical flesh, he probably said, I'm not interested in that. We even get some hints of that in those last hours. But what does he say? Not my will, but thy will be done, in, O God. And he cries out to the Father, and the Father is with him. You know, God wants to minister to us. Hebrews 5, 8 and 9. Hebrews 5, 8 and 9. 
It says, Through he, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having perfected, he became the author of eternal life to all who obey him. Isn't that amazing? He became the author of eternal life. Because why? First, he obeyed the Father. And second, if we obey him, he gives us also eternal life. Obedience is important. It's greater than sacrifice. It's, it's, it's more important than anything else we can do is to be obedient to God. Amen? It's so important. Hebrews 11, 8 says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to a place which he would have received as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Sometimes we don't have all the knowledge and all the wisdom. And God doesn't give it to us all at one time. But he, what he wants to see, are we willing to be obedient? I've had in my life that sometimes God has called me to, to do the certain things to see if I would be obedient. And after I was willing to be obedient, says, okay, that's, you don't have to fulfill that. And I could give you lots and lots of stories concerning that. One more scripture over in 1 Peter chapter 1. Verses uh, 14. He says, As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as you were ignorant, but as he who called you to is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Verse 16. Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. God wants us to follow in his footsteps. He wants us as disciples to walk according to to His Word, and according to His Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. You know, sometimes a challenging thought is with God and His Word, it seems things are very black and white. And I believe they are. God wants them to be black and white. He doesn't want a middle-of-the-road Christian. How do we know that? Because the churches in the last day, one of them was called out because they were lukewarm. And he said, because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. I'd rather have you hot or cold. I'd rather have you obedient or disobedient. But be one of them. Don't try to be religious and in between. Stand up and be counted for our Lord Jesus Christ. To obey means that, that one carries out that which has been requested of them by the one who is in a position of higher authority. That's, his, our, that's our Lord Jesus Christ. And we as disciples need to trust and obey his, our Lord Jesus Christ to follow and to do our Master's bidding in all things. Now you say, Pastor, I think you're being rich, extreme tonight. I didn't write the book. You know, you can throw stones at me, but it keeps using the word all. In all of his word and in all of his voice, that as he speaks to us, we fulfill what he has called us to do. We are to make a commitment to walk in the will of the Father and not to live by our will. Yes, that's why we are told that the way of the Lord is narrow, but the way of the world is broad. People are not going to want to sign up because they want their own will and they want to follow their own obedience. But when we give our lives to Christ, we are asking Him to come in and fill our lives and anoint us with His presence. Why? Because we want to walk in His presence and fellowship with Him for all eternity. Lord, when, when, when people do that, there is great blessings. I, I, I can't understand why Israel... And why people over and over again kept turning their backs on God and kept going after false idols. Not realizing that if they would just simply obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus. The lack of obedience can bring about punishment and disfellowship with God and with his disciples and with each other. We know the truth. And if we obey it, it will empower us and set us free. I want to say one thing as we conclude here. I believe all of us know a good portion of the truth. We know what is right and wrong. We know what we should be doing and not doing. 
But often, we do not listen to the voice of God and to the Word of God. We just hope that it just stays over there. Keep it in the back corner and it may someday I will deal with it. But today is the acceptable day that we need to deal with it. If God is speaking to us about something we need to be obedient to, then we need to confess it to the Lord and ask the Lord to forgive us and say, Lord, here am I. I'm going to follow your word. I'm going to walk in your way. I'm going to do what you've called me to be to your as your servant, Lord, because I know that there's no other way. So to think that we need to remember today as about our discipleship empowerment tip, it's important that obedience is key to all we do and say. That everything we do in life, we try by God's help and by God's strength. Oh, you will make mistakes. You will fall down. But that's why we need to pray daily for the infilling, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because in yourself, you cannot do it. They tried to do that with the law. And they were able, not able to do it. That's why the Son was sent to us. To show us the way, the truth, and the life. And the way, the truth, and the life is to believe in Him and to trust in Him. And then to come to Him and allow Him to fill us with power and fire. So that we will be able to be obedient. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, for this word. We know it's a challenge. It's even a challenge in my own heart. Lord, how it's easier to, to give sacrifices than it is to obey. But I pray tonight that as we gather around and as we pray one for another, that we will desire to be obedient and to walk in obedience according to your word and according to your spirit. Thank you for this opportunity to share again this wonderful nugget, this wonderful discipleship empowerment tip that I believe that, oh God, if we follow, if we accept, there's nothing but blessings and encouragement and also the most of all, eternal life for all who are obedient to you, Jesus. I thank you now. Be with us as we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you and we'll see you again tomorrow.